Hello, good day and welcome back. So today I have two very important announcements to make. One is the end of one thing and the start of something new. So I'm going to be ending um, the current series, no more videos, on programming language compare. Now, the reason I'm doing that, I'll get to in a minute. The second announcement is sort of the launch of Straversity. Now back to the first, why am I ending um, the series program language compare? Well, one, um, for the very little time I have, I've uh, been spending more and more time working on that, doing program language compare, and not having time to work on developing the courses I said I would, I was planning to release after the last GoLang program team, which are courses that based on that are really focused on skill development. Programming language compare is not skill development course. It's just a um, set of videos trying to look at different programming languages. And to be honest, it's not very popular. I like it. I like looking at languages, but not too many people like looking at that stuff. Most people want to have one language or technology that they focus on, learn it very well and move on with their life. And I get that. So that's one of the reasons, to be fr frank, why I'm ending programming language compare. The second reason is so I can have more time to work on Straversity. So what is Traversity? It's Traversity and what's going to be different about what I was doing before. Like I said, Traversity, the courses that can come under the umbrella is Traversity for all the other stuff that I want to do in terms of training and learning. Okay. And so what's going to be different is going to be a focus on skill development. And so if you look at the Go programming language course or web development course, that was skill development. But the courses, um, those two videos, those two courses had so many videos that tried to cover everything. In web development, I try to take you from a novice who doesn't know anything about web development and cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Angular. That's just like four courses alone crammed into one series. So in terms of skill development, yeah, it can help you develop your skill, but it's not very focused. So now we're going to focus on skill development in a way that's manageable. So the courses are going to be concise, they're going to be more lab, and they're going to be better support um, structure available. And I'll get back to that towards the end. The other thing is that for the courses, there'll be a consistent naming theme um, throughout the courses. So if you think about any course that you've ever taken, you tend to have an introductory course and that just sort of introduces you to some new concept, new ideas, the things that are nice and shiny about why you should be doing this thing. And then a little bit more in-depth coverage, which is like sort of like a mid-level um, um, course. And then, of course, your expert slash advanced course. And I'm going to do the same thing here, except I'm looking through different optics. And I'm going to think as the courses that we're going to be looking at as places that you can visit or places where you can live. And so if you think about it, if there's a place called Goville, for example, and you were to visit there, what would you be interested in as a visitor? You would hear about this place called Goville, that's awesome, programming is easy there, people are having fun programming, it allows you to do concurrency very easily, and as a tourist, that's what you'd want to see. How does it? How is it different from other programming language that you know or you don't know? And so you just be looking at the highlights and the fun things, you wouldn't get into the details. And if you really like what you're seeing, you're going to go back there several times. And the more often you go back, you no longer care about the shiny new things because you know those already. You sort of want to get off the path and go see other things, right? You want to go into the wilderness and so on and do more adventurous stuff. And so that's what we're going to have, you know, slang courses for the adventurers. People who sort of want to go deeper in the courses that we're covering or the topic that we're covering. And then if you want to go beyond that, and this is very rarely you're going to want to go to being a native, um, where you're really looking too much at idioms, pitfalls, and tricks, but for some of the things, you do want to do this, okay? But I think that our everyday usage of a language or a technology is going to be um, good for an adventurer. And very few people need to really become do natives. And there's some things I know well enough that I can be able to do native course in them, and then some I don't know that well. Okay, so that's going to be sort of our target. And so here's an example. So here's some cover slides for some of the courses that I've, I'm developing, right? I'm working on. And so you can see C for native. So that's going to be really, really involved getting into the nitty gritty of C. This is how do you mix C and assembly language, for example? What's the calling convention between the two? Um, how you might write an operation system in C? How you twiddle bits, um, you know, device drivers, that sort of thing, right? Um, JavaScript for Taurus just really introduces like anybody, total novice, you've never programmed before, or you know other programming language. How do you, um, what's so good and nice about Java, the easy stuff, right? Go for adventures. You, you're not just looking at the shiny bits in Go, but how do you um, use concurrency well? What are some of the patterns that you use there, right? And so, as you can see, not only is the naming scheme consistent, but also the team for the slides are consistent, right? Um, the tourists that some people look like if they're just going to show up there and have a good time, and then the adventurers off try to climb in a rock, and then the natives are building infrastructure. So here are some of your programming courses. I have Go, C, C++, Rust, JavaScript, Python, Scala, Groovy, blah, 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 right? Rust and Kotlin uh, are two languages that I've played with very little. 
um, you can say I'm, I'm, I'm a tourist in those language. I've sort of drove through if there were a place on a map that you can go to. You can say I've drove through them and just saw some of the buildings and go, oh, that looks really nice and that's interesting. Um, but I haven't spent much time in them. I spent like a day or a couple hours. Install them, play them a little bit in the past. Um, Kotlin, Rust I think is very interesting because it's sort of like Go and intended to sort of replace C and C++. Um, that's one reason why I want, I want to look at it. Kotlin I want to look at because I used to do Angular, um, Android platform programming, development application for Android and Java is the language there and now Google is supporting um, Kotlin. So I figured, hey, why not revisit Kotlin and get more in depth and just don't be a tourist. So I'm looking forward to, to diving into Chorus and um, Kotlin and hope that you join me for that. Um, in terms of technology, you know, Docker is a technology. Um, really interesting, you see how it's gonna come in handy when we do like go for adventures and some other things like when we get into big data, Docker and stuff is gonna come in really nice. Actually, for a number of languages, being able to, ha to have Docker under your belt is gonna make a lot of other things easier, you're gonna say. And there are things like React and Vue.js, which is sort of like um, my Rust and Kotlin in for, for programming languages, in that there's stuff that I've sort of played with and people really like, but I haven't spent much time there again, sort of just drove through and look at the highlights, but I would certainly like to revisit them. So one of the things I wanna do is always keep these courses free and make it available so that you pay what you want. If you don't have any money to pay or you don't wanna, even if you're a billionaire and you don't wanna pay anything, you can still look at the courses, you can still have access to it. And eventually when I have this traversity to come website, I also wanna post the courses there. Um, but also, I want to be able to try and recoup some costs. And so I'll be offering the courses on Udemy and that's going to be paid. Uh, you're not going to be forced to take it there. Like I said, it's going to be in both places. So how might this work? Well, first I'll launch the course on Udemy and keep it there for two months to three months. And that would give me an opportunity to, like I said, recoup some costs associated with the course. And then eventually I'll move it to YouTube and Soforcity.com. And then of course it's going to be free slash pay what you want. Um, so the first course I'm looking to launch on Udemy, I'm hoping to get it out before Christmas. And then by the first quarter or in the first quarter in 2018, have the same course that's on Udemy, bring it to um, to YouTube and Straversity.com. And of course, I'll be trying to keep this going and rolling out additional courses. So, um, you know, there'll be more courses hopefully launch on Udemy and sort of keep it going that way. And the hope here is that if I can free up more time and use my time more wisely to just focus in on the course and skill development, things are gonna happen more consistently and, um, and on a much more regular pattern. Now, in terms of contribution for pay what you want, um, those are courses that are going to be on YouTube and Traversity, or you just want to contribute. These are some of the ways you can contribute, you know, through PayPal, um, PayPal is Traversity.com, or if you're into digital currency, using one of those digital currencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Ethereum. And in terms of support, like I said before, um, no, um, Twitter handle is Traversity, just Traversity. Um, previously, I couldn't get Traversity, so I had to use Traversity 1, but now it's simply Traversity. And Instagram is also Straversity, reaching out any one of those ways. Email, once I start rolling out the courses, I'm gonna have courses as Straversity that come as an email address. You can just send an email with the course name that you need support on, either suggestion, comments, feedback, criticism, keep them constructive, whatever, all right? Um, and of course, if it's on Udemy, they have, um, that platform has ways for you to make comments and so on and participate. And then um, once Traversity come is up and running properly, it's gonna, and you sign up and you do the e-course enrollment, you're gonna be able to have the same um, science kind of capability. So I know that's a little bit fast, but I'm excited, very, very excited to take this sort of new direction that I've been wanting to do ever since, but I haven't really got to spend much time on it. So now um, being able to tell you more about it, I'm gonna, from now on, being able to focus on that. Um, I look forward to see you on the other side of this announcement when I start posting those courses. All right, take care, see you in the next video, and um, have a great rest of the day. Thanks, bye.